today. <laughs> you did? You can't tell it. <laughs> well, you're just so mean all the time. No, I'm just telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Mom says if you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. <laughs> well, I'm just... Boys and girls, what do you think? Do you think Lola's hair needs a comb? Oh, come on, guys. You know it's beautiful. Who's with me? Huh? Who's with me? Lola needs a comb. Lola needs a comb. Well, I bet you need a toothbrush. No, I do not. I brushed my teeth last Saturday night. Well, you know you're supposed to do that twice a day. What? Twice a day? I thought, but I remember that saying. Remember that saying? It's... Visit your toothbrush once a year and brush your dentist twice a day. <laughs> That's not the way it goes. Well, it's not? Man, somebody must have told me the wrong thing. Well, okay. I'll try to do that tonight before I go to bed. 
That might help me sleep better. Probably so. Yeah. Okay. Well, boys and girls, we're ready for Vacation Bible School tonight. And I hope you are as well because we're going to have a great time. But before we go any further, let's ask the Lord to help us tonight. Lola, would you like to pray and open VBS tonight? Sure. All right. Well, you go right ahead, okay? Now, kids, close your eyes and be really still while we talk to God. Dear Lord, thank you for this third night of Vacation Bible School, and thank you for each boy and girl who is watching us tonight. I pray that they would learn from these lessons, and that if any of them do not know you and aren't saved, that maybe tonight they'll ask you into their heart to save them. Thank you for all that you'll do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, that is awesome. Well, boys and girls, are you ready to sing? Have you been enjoying the songs of Miss Sabrina and all our friends? I hope so. Now remember, sing out loud. Oh, and don't forget to be watching for our friends. Peter the Pelican and Timmy the Toucan. That's what? No what? Toucan. What? There's no Toucan. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Now, what do you call that thing again? This a is mulligan? a pelican. Oh, a pelican. And that is a what? Uh, a bird. Well, what kind? A colorful bird. Well, yeah, but it has a name. Oh, oh, I know. That is a parrot. Yes! See, I can get one right, too. Yeah. All right, boys and girls, remember, watch for these birds throughout the story tonight. And when you see them, make sure and comment below on the video and let us know where you saw them at. Because the first one to find them gets a special prize, okay? Well, let's get ready to sing. Sing out, sing loud, and sing happy. Here we go. All right, I love him better every day. I love him better every day. you didn't know write it down in the comments and let us know that that was the first time you'd ever heard the song so we know it would be fun for us to know that you learned a new song 
I love learning new songs. Yeah, me too. I like singing old songs too. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Oh. Yep, I'm getting there. Getting close. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I tell you what. Let's get ready to sing another song. But this time, kids, while you sing, let's all stand up and stretch your legs and your vocal cords and sing out these songs. We're going to do oh, What a Mighty God We Serve. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. singing songs. Don't you, Lola? I do. Oh, I, I, songs are some of my favorite things to do. I sing them all day long. That's really cool, too, because you don't even have to be at Vacation Bible School to listen to That's them. That's right. You can sing anytime. That's right. All right. Well, guess what time it is? It's craft time. Craft time. Yeah. Boys and girls, how's your crafts looking this week? Are you doing your best? Maybe once you get them all together, you can put them up in your room somewhere. Yeah. So that you remember Vacation Bible School. Or give them to your mom because moms love when kids make crafts for them. Yeah, that's right. I remember my mom kept some crafts that I made for for a long time. I think it was because she actually lost them, but I tried. All right, get your craft kits out. If you haven't received a resource packet from the church yet, be sure and let us know so that we can get it to you as soon as possible. And we sure would love to see a picture of your craft once you get it together. All right, get ready. Miss Stacy's coming to show us how to do these crafts. All right, guys, so here we are on the third night of Vacation Bible School, and we're going to do what they call a well cup game. So you're going to need a few things, so I'm going to tell you what you need, and I'm going to give you a few minutes to go get that together. Um, you're going to need some flour or some sugar, anything that you might be able to put inside a balloon, and a funnel, okay? And then a pen or a pencil, and a pair of scissors. So I'm going to give you a few minutes to go gather that together.
Okay, so hopefully you got all your things together that you need. So you need to pick up your blue cup and your pen. And what I need you to do is poke a hole in the bottom of the cup. Not too big, just big enough that we can run this string through, just like that. Okay, so once you've got that, let's take our string and put it through the hole of the cup. Pull your string all the way through and leave about seven inches from the bottom. And what we're going to do is bring it together and tie it in a double knot just so it's secure around the cup. Like that right there. Okay. Now in your packages you should have some glue dots. So you're going to take a glue dot, you're going to stick it on one side of the cup, and then you're going to take your eye and you're going to stick it on that glue dot so your well will have an eye, just like that. Okay? Once you've done that, take your balloon. I don't know if you've got a pen or a marker, but you can draw you a little stick figure of a person on your balloon. Make him a, some legs some arms, and a head. So it kind of looks like that, because it's supposed to represent Jonah. Jonah and the whale. And your little funnel, stick it in the top of your balloon, and your flour, or your sugar, or whatever you might have, fill your balloon up. Okay, once you have that, you want to tie a knot in your balloon. Don't blow your balloon up. Just take it and tie a knot. Okay, and once you've got that, take the long end of your string and tie it around the end of the balloon. You can double knot it so it won't come loose. Okay, and just stick that aside. You should have a blue piece of paper in your kit that's got a whale tail on it. So what we need to do is we need to cut that out. So you little ones might need your parents to help you cut that out again. Okay, and once you've got that cut out, at the bottom you take the tail and I need you to fold it in half, just where you've got, so because we're going to glue that to the bottom of your cup. So that other glue dot you have, put it on the bottom of your fold of your tail, like this, and we're going to stick it to the bottom of our cup. And you can fold it back and forth so you can see your tail move up and down. So that's going to be your whole thing. And then what you try to do is you just swing it back and forth and you try to get that balloon in your cup. <laughs> well, mine ain't working well, is it? Not very good at that. There we go. And that's your little game. Oh, wow, I really like this whale game. It's pretty awesome. A whale game? Yeah, see this cool whale game Miss Stacy showed us how to put together? I thought it was a cute little rabbit. What? A see? rabbit? 
What's a rabbit got to do with anything? Well, they're just cute. Uh, rabbit? <laughs> now, who has the best craft? Oh, please. See? See my well game? And it works, well, too. Well, let's just see how it works. Let's see. Watch. I'm the best at the well game. Here we go. One, two, three. Hey! Huh, wait. Let me try again. Hey! Wait, one more time. Oh, that oh. was close! Miss, one more time. One, two, two and a half. I'm backing three. up. <laughs> oh, hey, keep your well game over there. Oh, that's not how it works. Well, you're not supposed to hit people. Well, what are you supposed to do with it? Well, if it was a cute rabbit like mine, you'd give it a name and, and talk to it. What'd you name your rabbit? Um... Stew. What? Yeah. Rabbit Stew. Stew? Rabbit the Stew. That's not nice at all. My rabbit's name is Princess. Princess? Ha! Well, I've got a cool well game. It's story time. Oh, Isn't that right, right Lola? Yes, it is. Awesome. I love story time. Me too. Yep. Hey, do you remember what happened last night? Well, of course I do. Oh, what, what happened? Let's well, see if you remember tonight. It seems like we're in the middle of a storm. That's right. It was a big storm, right? Yeah, I felt seasick just watching it. <laughs> yeah, and Jonah was sleeping through the whole thing. How can a person sleep through that? Well, I don't know, but he must have been really tired. I guess so. So what do you think happens to Jonah? I don't know. Uh, well, maybe the ship sinks. I, well, I tell you what, let's watch and see what happens. Hebrew! Hebrew, awaken! Hebrew, awaken! Hebrew, awaken! We're in a storm. Come and pray to your God. Oh, what? Come what? and pray to your God, Hebrew. We're going to perish. What do you mean, pray to my God? What? Come and pray to your God. We're praying to our gods. Someone has got a God anger. This storm is a hand of God. Look, Come. I'm sorry, but I can't pray to my God. Why can't you pray to your God, Hebrew? Look, I just can't, okay? Look. I'm running from him, all right? When y'all asked me where I was going, I'm, I'm running from my God, okay? I, what God are you running from, Hebrew? Okay, full, full honesty, my name is Jonah, and I'm a prophet of Jehovah, and he told me to give him a... I deliver messages for him, okay? I, Hebrew, what have you brought on this ship? He told me to go somewhere and deliver a message, and I didn't do it because I didn't want to go... And now here we are. This is this is all my fault because I'm running from him, okay? Hebrew! Yeah, to him, Hebrew! Okay? You've endangered us all! Confess to your God! I can't, okay? You have Just to. We will perish, Hebrew. We'll perish! Oh. Let's go up. I've got the Hebrew right there. Hebrew, tell them, tell them what you told me about your God, Hebrew. Okay, Hebrew. look! I have a Let's confession! What do you do? I'm running from God, okay? Why? why? That's why I didn't want to go to Nineveh. He told me to go to Nineveh. I didn't want to go. Why? So I ran. What you doing to us? This Hebrew brought this, oh, this kill us. tragedy upon us. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let's, let, let, let's see if we can get the boat Look, to shore. Yeah, let's the see boat. if we can get the boat to it's shore. It's not going to work. You have to throw me overboard. Oh, Trust oh. me, you throw me over the storm. Oh. Oh. Boy, I'm over my heart. This is storm's too bad. We gotta get out. Oh. 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 It's all calm. Wow, that's Storm's over. Storm's over. Storm's over. Storm's over. Storm's over. Right. Oh my goodness. Just like that. Oh, wow. We must pray to the God of the Hebrew. Jehovah. Jehovah. Oh Jehovah, we pray. Please forgive us for throwing the Hebrew overboard. Let not his blood be upon our hands. Thank you 
God of the Hebrew, Jehovah. Amen. Amen. Wow! That was a crazy storm! It sure was! Boy. Isn't it amazing how God uses different things to get our attention? That's right, that's right. Boy, I bet those sailors and Jonah, I bet they were scared to death during that storm. I bet so. But, but what happened? After they threw him overboard, what happened to Jonah? Well, you see, God had prepared a really big fish to swallow Jonah. What, a big fish? That's crazy. So you mean as soon as Jonah hit the water, he was swallowed by a big fish? Yes, exactly. Ooh. Isn't that crazy? That's ridiculous. Hey, what happened to Jonah after that? How, what's going to happen to him now? How can he survive after being eaten by a big fish? Well, I guess we'll just have to watch and see. Oh boy, I can't wait. in the water and then I heard something and then... Ugh. What? Oh, gross! So slimy! Oh, what's that smell? It's all these fish. Is that a... Is that a whale noise? That is... A whale? I'm in a whale. There's no. I can't. I'm gonna die in a whale. Eaten. Way to go, Jonah. I'm gonna die in a whale. in here. About two days, I think. Oh, I'm still alive, though. I guess. This is where I'm gonna die, isn't it? Way to go, Jonah. Run from God. Oh. My head hurts so bad. I get so hungry. Not that it matters. I mean, I'm going to be fish food as it is anyway. Hard to believe. Jonah, prophet of God, the great and mighty Jehovah, would speak to me. And I would actually get a chance to go and tell people what he said. But this is how my story ends. Fish food. <laughs> three days. I've been in here three days. My old mother is not going to believe this story. Nobody would believe this story, actually. I mean, the fish, they come in... They, I watch them dissolve into nothing and then they go out. Little crabs, they come in, they go out. But here's old Jonah, three days, and look at me. Nothing. I'm still me. Who survives in the belly of a whale for three days? Tell me. <sighs> Have you ever seen anything so pathetic? Mm -mm. This boy needs some help. What? Take it easy, Jonah. We're on your side. And we've got a message for you. Now I know I'm going crazy. You're feeling pretty.
pretty blue. Obviously. You didn't do what God requested. Oh. Rub it in. Yeah, I'd be mobbing too. I was gonna be digested. Hey, this ain't a pretty picture, no. I said it ain't a pretty sign of. You ran from God this morning. And you're well. Chow tonight. That's not even a little bit funny. But oh, hang on, not so fast. Life ain't over yet. I'm See, we're here to tell you all about a forgiveness that you can get. All right. You see, God's got a mercy, God's got a love, and right now He's gonna lend a helping hand from above. Praise the Lord, He's a God of second chances. You'll be full and have us love your life and answers. You can be restored from your darkest circumstances. Our God is a God of second chances. Ain't it good to know God? He'll give some chance. Well, that's enough to get. From Mr. Grumpy Pants. So when you say you're sorry for all the stuff you do, show sure that he'll be ready to give a second chance to you. Praise the Lord, he's a God of second chances. You'll be full and have us love your life and answers. You can be restored from your darkest circumstances. Our God is a God of second chances. If you believe God's up is true, then you should know what you should do. If you believe God's love is true, then you should know what you should do. If you, if you believe, believe God's love is love is true, it's true within you, and you should know and know what you and you should do. If you, if you believe, believe God's love is love is true, it's true within you, and you should know and know what you and you should do. And do. God gives us second chance. Second chances. Second chances. Praise the Lord, He is a God of second chances. You'll be born when light when you're restored. Darkest circumstances. Our God is God. Second chances. God gives us second chance. Second chances. Of course. That explains everything. The fish come in, they get digested, they leave because they don't get a second chance. God's done with them. It was food for the whale. I'm not getting eaten because I am not food for the whale. God's not done with me yet. He still loves me even though I disobeyed him. I was running from Nineveh, but he's using this to get me back to where I need to be. God didn't destroy my life. He saved it. Because God is a God of second chances. Now who's going to believe this story? You know what? Everyone. Because I'm going to be alive to tell them. God. I know I'm in the belly of a whale. And you know I'm here because you put me here. Just like you put me on this earth for a purpose for you. And even though I'm scared, and even though I'm hurting, you're with me. And God, I just want you to know that whenever I get out of this, I'm going to serve you the only way that I know how, and that's with everything in me. You tell me to go, I'll go. You tell me to speak, I'll speak. God, I want to be your servant. I want to serve you with my whole heart. And I want to thank you, God, for being a God of second chances. And thank you for loving me and protecting me even when I didn't think I was being protected and I was upset about being here God you were protecting me God thank you 
And God, I'm ready to get out of here. You are the God Jehovah. When you speak true, you speak nothing but truth. And God, when you speak wisdom, you speak nothing but wisdom. And God, thank you for letting me be your servant. Amen. <laughs> I've never heard that noise before. What's going on? What? What? Is that right? <laughs> I've told you this before, but a girl can do a whole lot of thinking while she's out here fishing. Nobody to bother her. Just the sounds of the birds and the, the geese and... Wow. Beautiful day. I've been thinking about how God had to love Jonah. You say, what? God loved Jonah? And he sent that storm. Yeah. God had to love Jonah. Because he could have let Jonah die. But he didn't. He had prepared a big fish to swallow Jonah. Now, do you think that just a coincidence or oh Jonah just got lucky and that big fish was just right there oh no God had a plan God always has a plan for his children you know God had told I'm trying to think God had told Jonah to go to Nineveh and preach to the people he did not ran away from God, turned his back on God, got on the boat, then everybody was in trouble, thought they were going to drown. He said, no. He said, throw me overboard because it's my fault. I ran away from God. And God is punishing me. See, we know when we've disobeyed. We know when we've done wrong. Nobody has to tell us. So, they threw him overboard. Now, these men on that boat, they did not believe in the one true God. But they threw Jonah off that boat. And guess what? The storm ceased. Because God, he is the master of the seas. The master of the seas. He's the one who controls the winds and the waves. But God loved Jonah enough to not... He could have been eaten by sharks. He would have drowned. And probably we might have thought he should have. He disobeyed God. But God had mercy on Jonah. Now what in the world is mercy? Mercy is when God does something for us that we do not deserve prepared that fish, that big old fish <clears throat> and it swallowed Jonah but guess what you remember last night I told you Jonah thought he could get away from God but he forgot God's promise God said I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you and God was right in the belly of that big old fish let's go in that fish with Jonah you know, we have our senses. We can see, we can hear, we can smell, we can taste, we can feel. Think of Jonah. Think of all the seaweed, that nasty seaweed out of the ocean and all the nasty fish that Jonah, that, that big fish had eaten. It's going through that belly of that big fish and Jonah's right in there and he's just a swimming in all that mess. Think of what it had to get in his nose and he had to smell that stinky smell. It would get in his ears, even in his mouth. <laughs> even in his mouth and he would taste it. He, he would feel the slime with his hands. His eyes, I'm sure it got, it probably he had to close his eyes or rub them to even be able to, to 
see a little bit in the darkness of the whale of the big fish and oh my goodness what a mess but you know what God prepared that fish for Jonah because he loved him you say what sure enough sometimes God has to get us in a place that we will listen to God we'll stop and we'll focus on God and think about God and we will remember what he wants us to do what's the right thing to do Jonah was in the belly of that fish three days and three nights <clears throat> so he had a whole lot of time to think and do you know what while he was in there he decided some things he decided oh god i should have listened how many times have we thought oh god i should have listened i should never have disobeyed god you were right and i was wrong oh god of israel uh, he cried out the Bible said he cried out God hear my prayer hear my cry he asked God to forgive him and guess what he told God God I will serve you now what's God gonna have to do to us before we will obey and we will serve him but God loved him enough to put him in a place of safety where no sharks could get to him, he wouldn't drown, nothing would happen to him. Oh my goodness, God's so good. And he protected him so that he could t teach him a lesson about obedience. Wow. <clears throat> God's mercy is everlasting. He gives us one chance to obey then he'll give us another chance to obey. Sometimes he gives a third chance, a fourth chance. But there will come a time when God says, now that's enough. Remember when Jonah was supposed to go to Nineveh and he headed, turned his back on God and went to Tarshish? Right here, God said, that's enough, Jonah. You've gone far enough. And he stopped him and he sent the storm. That wasn't being mean to Jonah. That was saying, Jonah, I'm not going to let you keep going because the further you go, the more trouble you're going to get in. That was the love of God for his children. Wow. God heard and God had mercy on Jonah. You saw it tonight where that big old fish vomited Jonah up. Now, did he vomit him up out in the middle of the, the ocean where he could have drowned or been eaten by sharks? No! He vomited him up on dry land. Was that an accident? No! God had a plan. He's got a plan for you and he has a plan for me. Oh my goodness, God is so good. I bet Jonah didn't get up and say, mm, I feel lucky today. I'm lucky. God, that big fish just vomited me up. And can you believe it's dry land? No. He said, thank you, Father. Thank you. And what is he going to do now? <clears throat> you, think he, <clears throat> you think he's going to go to Nineveh now? <laughs> I bet you, I bet you that he could have run a marathon and won it at that point because he knew he had better obey God. Tonight, boys and girls, I've been telling you every night that God told you to do something in his word. He said that today is the day of salvation. Don't wait till tomorrow. It might be too late. You, after it's time, your turn to go to live in a, either heaven or hell say after you're gone oh I decided I want to go to heaven you got to do it today got to do it today because we don't know when it's going to be our turn to leave this world 
You've got to believe that you're a sinner. And we know by this story that we have in my Bible lessons that we have all been disobedient to God. We've disobeyed. We're sinners. That meant me and that means you. And God won't let sin in heaven. That meant me. That means you. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that if we would just believe his son died on the cross and arose from the dead and he's in heaven right this minute waiting to write your name down in his Lamb's book of life. That meant for me and that means for you. Tonight you have a choice to make. Are you going to be obedient or are you going to be disobedient? Remember obedience brings good things in your life. Disobedience always brings trouble. We're going to pray right now and you're not praying to me because I had to pray to God to forgive my sins. When I was a sinner. I had to ask Jesus to write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. I can't write your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. I'm not in heaven. So I want you to pray after me. Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart that I am a sinner. I believe that God loved me so much that He gave His only Son who came and died on the cross. He paid for my sins that day so I wouldn't have to go to hell. Today, I ask you, Jesus, you arose from the dead. You're in heaven. I ask you to please take your precious blood and wash my sin away and write my name. I want reservations in heaven right now. I want you to prepare for me a place because one day I'm going to see you, Jesus face to face. Thank you for saving me. And I love you. In Jesus name. Amen. Wow. My goodness. I wonder if Jonah, who was a real man, he was a real man. He served the very same God he served is the very same God I serve. And that if you're a Christian, the very same God that you serve. I wonder if he knew back then, I know he didn't, that people thousands of years later would be talking about his life and it would cause us to know how important it is to be obedient. Oh, I was obedient. Remember last night I was obedient when I, <clears throat> to my fishing buddies, Jack and Nit, and I use one of these nasty stinky crawly worms well i've got to show you something you are not going to believe obedience Woo! let me get up here obedience i obeyed Woo look Woo! i obeyed everybody around here you need to look Woo And look what I caught. Woo! I'm going to have a fish fry. I'm going to have a fish fry. Woo oh, yay! What a crazy story this turned out to be. Jonah's inside of a big fish. Can you believe it? I can't. Wow. You never would have thought that happen? Me neither. Wow. Wow. Do you think that Jonah ever will listen to what God wants him to do? I bet if he lives through this, he'll always listen to God. Yeah, I bet so. Say, kids, what do you think? What was your favorite part of VBS tonight? We'd love to know about it. How about let us know in the comments below? Or send us an email or a call or text. Let us know what you like about VBS. Also, if you got saved tonight, 
If you ask Jesus to be your Savior, to forgive you of your sins, we would really love to know that that's what you did because it's the best decision you could ever make. Yeah, um, that's the most important thing. That's right. And boys and girls, we want to be happy and rejoice with you. So please let us know if you got saved tonight, okay? Well, that pretty much wraps it up for Wednesday night. Remember to be back here tomorrow at 7 o'clock p.m. We'll see you then. Bye, guys. Bye.